Holden released Colorado quite a few years ago. Since then it's had a midlife update. In the meanwhile, HSV has given it a little bit of a spit and polish. What do you think? We've reviewed Colorado many times before and I'll put a couple of links in the comments below. None of the standard Colorados come within cooey of the gravitas that this HSV model has. It oozes testosterone from every pore. If Sports Cat was a man, he'd be the 007 type, a rakish lad who'd want to buy you a martini, but only after he'd lifted your wallet to pay for it. And you'd probably find yourself thanking him. And he has three levels of trim. Sports Cat, the Look Pack, and Sports Cat Plus. All Sports Cats have the same 2.8 litre diesel engine. It has 147 kilowatts and 440 newton meters, but if you get the automatic, as this car is, that figure goes up to 500 newton meters. This is the mid-range look pack, which is essentially the Sport Plus minus the mechanical bits. So it doesn't have the fancy decoupling rear anti-roll bar and premium AP sports brakes. It has all the Sports Plus options, including the unique fascia and grille, bonnet hump and extended guards. It also has these fancy all-terrain hybrid tyres and hybrid doesn't mean these things have a battery in them. Oh no, it just means that it can go on both road and off-road. It also has the blackouts around the windows, black door handles and this black side step. As well, and this is a $1300 option, it has this sailplane. And while we're around the back, not only does it have those fancy LED running lights at the front, but the tail lights are also LED. This hard tonneau cover comes with the sports cat and has these inbuilt rails that you can put a carrier on, so you can kind of strap stuff to the top. It's quick release as well, just in case you want to take it off completely and put a tall load in. There's a tub liner as well, but of course that's an optional extra. It's 60,790 for the sports cat. The look pack is 62,490 and the plus is 66,790. They all come with manual transmissions and as I said the automatic is a six speed and it's an optional extra for 2,200 bucks. Also an optional extra is the Super Shock suspension for the Sports Plus model only and that's 3,600 bucks. The Prestige paint, which is Dark Shadow and Mineral Black, 550 bucks. The tub liner I told you about is $300. There's an eye bolt at the front for $75. And the load rack that fits up here on the top of the tonneau cover in these grooves is $647. Inside, the cabin has a certain sporty coziness. The seats have jasmine leather and Windsor suede. There's more of that on the dash too, and lots of hard surfaces to remind you that this is, at the end of the day, a utilitarian car. With the seat set in front for me to be driving, my knees are about um, 10 centimeters from the seat in front, but as you can see, there's not a huge amount of room to move about here, but it's still okay. I wouldn't want to do it on a long trip though. In the front, there's plenty of space, and I've got this set up for me to drive, and honestly, there's a mountain of space in here. Now, on the doors, you'll notice there's the red stitching, just above the window switches. Now, all of that is really hard, except for this panel in the door, which is quite soft. Again, that's all molded. And we have a mountain of the perforated leather as well, around the vents and across the middle part of the dash. The good thing is the driver's seat has powered adjustment, but the front passenger has to make do with manual. Driver assistance includes trailer sway control, rollover mitigation, auto wipers and lights, forward collision alert, and lane departure warning. Notice the forward collision alert does not include automatic braking. You're on your own. Likewise, the lane warning does not include steering. So it doesn't automatically park itself. It doesn't have steering assistance. Uh, and unfortunately, and I can't understand why, it doesn't have active cruise control either. Remember I said that the ride is very firm. Well, it is. It's very, very firm. But I suppose the thing is that HSV doesn't expect that this car is going to see very much in the way of off-road activity. It just won't. But you might get a little bit of towing in. As I said, that's 3,500 kilos of brake to capacity. The center console is just as you'd expect. It's the same as in any other Colorado. 
down below is the, between the front seats, is the control to switch on the fly into four wheel drive high and low range and two wheel drive high range. El elsewhere on the centre console is the hill descent control, the parking sensor control, hazard flashes, stability control off. In the front, instead of having automated braking, it just has a warning if you get too close to the car in front. And that consists of some lights that are down here in the front of the driver that project up onto the windscreen. There's built-in satellite navigation. There's Holden's MyLink system too, which of course comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can handle your phone, messaging and so forth completely hands-free, or you can use the buttons on the dash. You can also use the touch screen. Also on the centre console, you'll find buttons to operate the multimedia system and the climate control. There's only a single zone climate control in this car, which is um, slightly strange. Ride on 18 inch wheels with off-road tyres can be a little bit hit and miss, but it's not that that's made this car firmer. It's the fact that HSV have fettled the suspension, given it special sports suspension, which definitely gives it better handling, there's no question, but it also means that the ride can be a little bit uncomfortable. Sports Cat is meant to bridge the gap for the man that has everything between the utilitarian ute, the one that has paint sloshing about in it and, and things denting the back and ladders on the top, and the thing that tows jet skis on the weekend. The thing that you would take your other half to the pictures in. The black bits make it look mean and angry and it kind of looks like it wants to growl at you. And I think it does that pretty successfully. I suppose the thing about this is that when you get into an HSV named car, doesn't matter what it is, sedan, ute, hatch, whatever, you expect it to have performance. And the performance of this car is exactly the same as any other Colorado. They haven't touched the transmission and they haven't touched the engine. So when you get in, you see that HSV, the, the symbol on the front, which is a combination of a helmet and Holden's Lion, and you start it, and that engine that sounds like a piece of industrial farm equipment greets you, you can't help but feel a little bit cheated. I like Sports Cat a lot. The question then becomes, is it worth 10 grand over any other Colorado? It loses a few points because of the things it doesn't have like blind spot monitoring for a start. Uh, you know, these days, that should be standard. It also doesn't have autonomous emergency braking. Also, that would come in handy is automated parking. To that end, I'm going to rate Sports Cat at seven out of 10. Now we're on the highway, I really do appreciate the fact that the ride on a smooth surface feels really good. Remember, this has industrial routes, it has commercial routes. It's meant to be a commercial vehicle. It's just that for some reason, buyers have decided that they want SUVs or LCVs. Now, interestingly, between LCVs, so this is an LCV, this pickup truck is an LCV, and SUVs like Jeeps and Range Rovers and so forth, they make up two thirds of the car market. Now, two thirds. Passenger cars are slowly dying. The HSV models are, relatively speaking, fairly low volume, and they're all out of HSV's factory in Melbourne. They take a standard donor car, a standard Colorado, and they fit it with bits and bobs. They do this with all HSV models, and of course they also do the new Camaro. Camaro is a little bit more trouble because it doesn't come in a right-hand drive so of course it has to be completely converted. Now the traffic's gotten a bit thicker. Driving sports cat around town is no more difficult than any other LCV. It's fairly responsive. The 0 to 100 time is leisurely because it's a relatively small engine pulling a relatively big heavy car and don't forget that 2.8 will pull up to, I think it's about 6,000 kilos. That's it for this week, that's your lot. Don't forget, leave a comment down below and subscribe way up there.